Hey everybody, this is John, owner of The Simplest Biz. You may be asking, what is The Simplest Biz? It is a pallet recycling business that I've been doing for the last 24 years and I teach other people how to do it. It's very streamlined. It's a business where we have very low overhead. We're getting pallets from businesses that don't know what to do with them anymore hundreds and hundreds a day, thousands a day, and we're getting them for free and we're taking directly to the people and businesses that need them without having to store them, without having to repair them, without having to lift them, without having to sort them, without having employees, without having overhead, without having a warehouse, streamlined, simple. So I teach people how to set these business deals up, these accounts up, who they are, what they need, what their problems are, how to solve their issues. And on the supplier side, and we also do that for the people that the businesses that buy them. I'm not referring to a pallet yard that we're selling to. We're actually selling multiple styles, multiple varieties of pallets, but we're also incorporating crates and drums and dunnage and wire spools and corrugated boxes and Gaylord boxes. <coughs> and a bunch of other items, dunnage, industrial bags, to those same businesses that need the pallets so we can create multiple revenue streams that recur on a weekly basis and get all about 95% of all this stuff for free. So again, keeping our overhead low. The topic of this particular video, <coughs> I didn't get any water, so I got a little cough, is about how to do this if I don't own a truck. Okay. I'm, I, I like what you have to say, John. I'm sick of my job. I'm sick of doing this internet stuff. I'm sick of my cubicle. I want to do my own thing. I want to get out and about. I want to have something simple. I don't want something that's going to twist my brain in knots, but how do I do it without a truck? So I wanted to go over the ways of doing it. All right. <coughs> I'm going to wait just a minute. And uh, see if some folks show up. I'm not sure. Oh, we got live 200. We got some folks, nine people on here. I was just looking for the number on here. So let's let's go over the methods of doing this business model without owning a truck and how I would do it if I was in your position. John, I like the pallet business. I like what you're talking about. I like the over low overhead and not having employees. But... I don't want to have to go out and buy a truck out of my own pocket um, after I go through this training. So here's what you do. Option one, and we're going to go through several. Coming out of the gate, I teach you how to scout for these pallets, who these businesses are, what their issues are, where they are, how to scout from home even. So when you set up your first two or three deals, meaning you have a supplier and a buyer, you're going to line all of those orders up on one day of the week, whether it be a Tuesday morning, a Wednesday morning, a Friday afternoon, whatever your time availability availability is. And you're going to tell these businesses that you're dealing with, I do my pickups and deliveries on Tuesday morning as an example. So we're going to rent a truck from Home Depot, which is very cheap through Home Depot, even though it's not that large of a flatbed or Penske, rent some uh enterprise rent some and sometimes you have a local place that rents a flatbed truck 16 14 foot 16 foot 18 foot 24 foot no cdl required think of it like a box truck like a u-haul if you've ever driven a u-haul it's no different the the trailer's attached to the cab but there's no box on it it's open and the reason we want it open in this particular scenario is so the forklifts that load our trucks have access from all sides and it just makes it an easier process. So they can approach and put stacks of pallets on that truck on the side. So on one day of the week, we're going to stack up as an example here. Let's say it's two orders of a uh, hundred pallets each. Okay. So it's Tuesday morning. You go rent it. it. Takes about 20, 30 minutes to rent the truck, drive to your first supplier or your main supplier and a lot of times that supplier is going to have 200 pallets and then they could be mixed loads. And, you know, I'll teach you how to do mixed loads as well. So you're not even having to sort them, but they're loading 200 pallets on your truck. Okay. So that 200 pallet process, 20 minutes, 
25 minutes maybe since it's 200. And you're going to strap them down to the truck. I teach you how to do this in the training as far as the strapping, the process of making sure the load secure. Now, we're not driving very far. A lot of people think, oh, you got to drive across the country or something with this or to the next state. No, we're going two blocks, three blocks, half a mile, two miles, five miles. I don't care if you have to do 20 miles, not that far. But a lot of cases, the way cities are constructed, we're only having to go a few blocks or a few miles in uh, from supplier that we're getting picked up to, to the buyer. Okay. So you're, you're getting that rental, you're driving in, you're getting 200 pallets loaded on to your truck from that one supplier. In a lot of cases, you may have two suppliers and other variations of this. Let's say you're getting 200 from one supplier and you have two other customers that needing a hundred each. Well, you're simply driving to the first supply. I mean, the buyer from that supplier directly to them. And you're unstrapping a few of the stacks and they're unloading those with their forklifts at the buyer. So there's your first hundred out of the way. So to get from the supplier to the buyer, it may take you anywhere from two minutes to 10 minutes. Okay. So we're at 30, 40 minutes at this point, let's say. And your first hundred is taken off. That's another five, 10 minutes to take them off. Right. So we're at 45 minutes for the first hundred pallets, you still have a hundred additional ones on your truck that you'll be taking to the next buyer. So you do that a hundred, you got them for free and you sell them for eight, 10, 12 bucks a piece. So you're at between 800 and $1,200 right there, depending on the size and where you live, you know, out West, they're more expensive than they are on the East coast, but they're going for eight, 10, $12 a piece, even mixed loads of pallets. All right. So we're at an eight to $1,200 get on the first hundred that we dropped off. And we're simply going to the next buyer that we've set up that we teach you how to go, you know, get uh, acquire in the training and you're dropping off the other hundred and they're, you pull in there and strap the, the last stacks of pallets and they're coming in, unloading them and you're writing an invoice for that one as well. And they're either paying you right then or you have a seven day net. So at that point, these are the first orders that you do. You haven't had to buy a truck and you're using a rental truck, but maximizing that rental on one day of the week. Okay. Now you're going to back out that $140, $150 for that, that truck rental. You had it for 24 hours. You could do multiple, multiple, you go do 10 loads in a day if you wanted to on a Tuesday, but we're coming out of the gate. Let's say you got those two orders. So if I made 800 on the first order, or, you know, hundred times eight, let's say 800 on the first order. And let's just say I made 800 on the second order or, or a thousand, but let's say 800. So we got 1600 bucks to a windfall. Now we've only driven five, six, seven miles in most cases or less. So we hadn't burned hardly any gas. That's the, you say five, 10 bucks in gas, you know, just even on the high end. So we got that expense. We have $150 for the rental. Okay. So sixteen hundred dollars minus one hundred fifty, we're at a fourteen hundred and fifty dollar profit since we got our pallets for free for that morning, uh, and that way we're not having to rent a truck every day of the week. Now think about this: those businesses that we just delivered to, and the supplier that we just got them from, they're going to generate more pallets come the next week that comes around, and the buyer is going to need more pallets the next time that comes around. But in those six days that you have open that you're not renting a truck in the beginning, you're going to be doing more scouting and more talking to the businesses and solving more problems for the businesses that I guide you to because we have massive lists of suppliers and buyers and, and everything you need to say and every question you need to ask and every problem you need to solve because the, the training is out in the field in the trenches showing you exactly what to do and what to say and where to go and how to say it and how to set this up. So in that six days you have free, you are going to get more accounts if you're hustling. So Tuesday rolls around again. Now you have those two orders of a hundred and now you have several more. So now you rent the truck again and, and you do through the same process, but now you're making more money on this second went go around because you've hustled and got more accounts and set up of, of suppliers and buyers to handle more accounts. So you've added the, the reoccurring 200 that you did the previous week, and now they're needing more, and the, the suppliers needing those pallets gone. 
and you've added a couple more loads to it. So now you're doing 400 ballots on a Tuesday instead of 200. And repeat it again. Do the same math we just did a minute ago. 8, 10, 12 bucks a piece per ballot and getting them for free. And then if you want to do it again another week, you know, and repeat that process. Now we have a mountain of money to be able to go out and find a old, non-flashy, flatbed truck is preferable. Some people do box trucks. I like flatbeds. Or you can, if you have a truck, it's something to pull it with. You can just get a trailer. I got my truck seven and a half years ago now. 12 foot long, eight foot wide. If you watch some of my other videos on here, you'll see it. It's nothing fancy. It was actually an old U-Haul. They took the box off and, and they just made it into a flatbed. So I got it for 3,600 bucks seven and a half years ago. 1996 had 103,000 miles on it when I bought it. Runs like a tank. F-350. I just changed the oil and I've had to do the brakes once. I did have an electrical thing with the... Um, solenoid or something at one point but very low maintenance over a seven and a half year period i do not need a cdl for it i do not need you know any type of special license i don't need you know i do need insurance on the truck okay so that's method number one for operating this business and letting the business buy you a truck okay um and uh, this will be posted up on the web if you're just getting in here late I went over the first way of doing this without uh, the, the pallet recycling business or distribution business is a better way to put it without having to have a truck, without having to have a warehouse, without needing employees, without having to sort this stuff or fix them or repair them or lift them. We don't have to do any of this in the way I teach this business model and the simplest biz training. Okay, so let's go into option two. Uh, let's say you know somebody who has a truck and a trailer. Well, simply propose to them to help you do your pickups and deliveries that you've set up and give them a cut of the action. You might want to do a non-compete or something if they're not family or whatever. But, you know, that's a way of going about it where they're making a little extra cash on their truck that they're in trailer that's been sitting in their driveway for months and months and months and, and allow them to help you out in the process of driving in, you're not lifting and loading them, the, the forklift driver that the supplier is, and do that process that way and give them a little cut of the action for helping you out. You're making profit, pay them their cut, cuts out the rental part, and you got a way of going about it that way. The third way of going about it is to do the brokering aspect of this business model where you are a middleman for the pallet game. You're setting up deals where you do not have to move pallets from point A to point B. So listen, you know, there's deals out there where there's a company needs a thousand pallets a week, right? And you don't want to stockpile a thousand pallets a week because that require space. So you have to, to do that, right? Plus it's time consuming if you have a warehouse and you're having to get pallets and then you unload them at your warehouse and then, you know, it's, it's a pain in the butt. So let's, let's in that thousand pallet a week deal, let's let someone else do the delivery of those pallets and the supply of those pallets. But since you're the one setting it up, you got a markup margin for you. And depending on what style of pallet it is, you have anywhere from, 75 cents a unit up to a couple bucks a unit on used pallets, right? If you aren't the person actually moving them point A to point B. So that's a middleman method for lightly used pallets, but you also have pallets that are what would be considered spec pallets, brand new, brand new, uh, newly built pallets that businesses need. Well, I don't want to build pallets. I don't want you to have to build pallets, but you can set the deal up. The margins when it comes to new pallets, I have any ranging anywhere from $3 all up to $62 per unit profit in my pocket per unit. Okay. So your margins are a lot larger in that those scenarios. And you have companies that need, I need 500 pallets brand new built per week. I need 800 a month. You know, so you have these reoccurring deals over and over again, but you are not having to literally have to pick them up. 
from point and take them from point A to point B. The way you set the deal is, is you're getting a cut for someone else building the pallets, delivering a pallet, and then you're getting a cut from that uh, deal each time those pallets are delivered over and over and over again. Okay. So those are three solid methods for not going out there and having to buy a truck to do this business model. Hello, wife. We're live on uh, YouTube today. Yes. I'm teaching, telling them about how they can do the pallet business without having to own a truck out of the gate. You know? Very cool. Yeah. Right? yeah. Absolutely. There's lots of ways to do that. Absolutely. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> uh, that's Melissa, my wife. So I was going to look at some of these sounds. Very motivated. Good morning. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Marcus. Um, glad y'all are here. Hey, Art, how are you? Good to see y'all. Awesome stuff. Wade Collins. Nice to see you, Wade. Oh, wait, wait, Wade's here? Yeah, Wade's on the on the feed. Oh, no, I got to say hello to Wade. Lily says says, Lily. Lily says hey to Wade. Hey, hey Wade. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay. So anyway, just to reiterate, for folks that want to learn more information about the pallet redistribution method I've been doing for 24 years, go to the simplestbiz.com, the simplestbiz.com, or you can go to the palletcourse.com. That's P A L L E T course.com. And that way, if you want to get more information, I cover all types of information about this business model for people who kind of like see it at first and like, oh, I want to investigate this a little further. I have so much information out here. It's not on how to do it because that's in the training, but it is what to expect and what to know about the industry as far as what's going on and how you can simplify your life and get time freedom and money freedom back for yourself. There's so many people out there these days where inflation's hit them in, in square between the eyes, their jobs working them to death. And they are, uh, you know, some of you may be in that type of position where you want something of your own and, and free up that time where you can spend more time with your family or do something you want to do on the side. Because doing the pallet in this, this pallet business, it doesn't take all day. You know, we do not trade time for money. I say that I'll say that a thousand times. We're not trading time for money with this. How many pallets can I move before 10 a.m. in the morning? Right. And then if I can pull in a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars before 10 a.m. in the morning, now I could goof off if I feel like it and not feel guilty about it. Or I can go do my honey do list in the middle of the day and make my wife happy and not feel, you know, feel happy about that and not trying to squeeze it in after I've worked an eight hour day, you know, that type of thing. Go play golf, fish, whatever, write music, you know, some of the things I do. Free up that, that you, so your life is not just work, eat, honey-do list, wake up, sleep, wake, you know, that cycle, with that not never-ending cycle of having to work for somebody else and they're dictating your schedule, how much effort you have to put out. But this, we don't trade time for money, we trade units for money. We can multiply ourselves, right? Um well, he's Wade said hello, beautiful. Aww. Don't let Tara hear. Um, thank you, she is beautiful. Nice to meet you, Brian. Anybody have any questions while I'm on here live? Anyone at all? Does, does anybody need a better explanation? Uh, okay, Marcus, monthly or bi weekly? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the, usually the orders, if you're talking about orders, the majority of them are weekly orders, right? The, we're on a week cycle. Um, we deal with a lot of times when we're doing point A to point B, we like these mid businesses, you know, regional. We're not trying to, we don't have to go for the Fortune 500 companies to make a really good living doing this. Now, can we work with Fortune 500 businesses? Yes, but... I would gravitate more toward the brokering side. You know, I need a thousand pallets every three days type situations, or I need a thousand pallets and I need 600 corrugated boxes 
every five days type situation. I want to broker that type of stuff and keep my life simple, right? Um, so when we get in these large numbers and I want to keep my overhead low, I don't want to have to have the head. Well, do some people do it? If you got property, do it. And you want to be able to, and you got a warehouse or some type of place to store stuff. I'm not going to, you know, shun you for doing that. If you have those uh, assets available to you, but you know, ever since I've been doing this for 24 years, I just worked at keeping it more, more and more and more simple and streamlined and efficient. The longer you do this business, the faster you get it done. So when I started doing this, as an example, I would have a buyer on this side of town and a supplier where, you know, 10 miles away over on this side of town, right? Well, as I kept working the business, the supplier over here, I'd find a buyer on this side of town as well. And I'd find another supplier and a buyer. So on Mondays, I can now, once I become efficient, I'm working this little five block radius or half mile radius on this side of town and just bouncing around and doing my, my pickups and deliveries. And some of them are 300 yards from each other and some are three blocks from each other and some are five blocks in that little radius. So there's my Monday, right? Now on Tuesday, I've built out this side of town and I have suppliers and buyers in this little pocket. So I'm only having it. I'm, Sometimes I have to drive to that little spot or I had my truck parked at one of my customers as a little secret. <coughs> Excuse me. Where now on Tuesday, I'm just bouncing around in this area. I'm never, I'm not having to go across town anymore. When I when you first start out, you might have to, who cares? You're still making great profit since we're getting 95% of this for free. But that's a strategy of we want where we want to get to, to simplify your life if you choose to do this. To where you're not spending time even traveling and you know my goal was i want to play golf by 8 30 right so i'd start at 6 45 and i'd knock out a couple loads make 14 1800 bucks and i'd go play golf and uh, not tell my wife <laughs> no <laughs> i've done that before actually but that was my goal. And then I can't get away with golf as much as I used to um, anymore. It's because, you know, it was just, I'm, I'm married and there's, she thinks of list for me to do, but that was my goal on any given day. Or I'd come home and I'd write music for seven, eight, how many hours, eight hours a day. I mean, eight, eight, nine, 10 hours a day when I got done with the pallets. But here's the thing I noticed about my life. And, and I don't want you to project and see if you can notice it about yours. When I was recording all that music, if some people think, well, that's goofing off, right? I didn't ever feel that way because I had made that money that, to, that was supporting my family, a good chunk of money in, in, in a short period of time, which allowed me to do things that some people consider frivolous. I love music. I like writing music and, and, I wouldn't feel guilty for doing it. Now, when I was playing golf three, four times a week, now my wife would say that's too many days, too much golf, right? So I have had to cut that back, even though I'd, I'd prefer to play four times a week. Um, let's see. We had a see. So let me see what somebody's saying. I have to put my old man glasses on. Who should you approach first, the builder uh, or the business using the middleman myth method? The builder or the business when using the middleman method? No, well, I'll get, well, that's covered in the training, but I'll give you a little hint. When you go to a builder, it'd be nice to have something in hand, right? So um, they're going to listen to you a little better if you had something in hand, right? Meaning a deal. Uh, that's coming into play. There's certain ways to word this conversation, to lock it in and for them to listen to you. And there's certain questions you need to ask the builder and the, the business you're dealing with to arrange this in a, in a correct manner for you to win, the builder to win, and um, uh, well, and the person buying the pallets to win as well and get it to where it's a consistent re re reoccurring revenue stream for yourself. And while I'm on recurring revenue streams, I talk a lot about pallets, right? 
pallets, 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 pallets. Here's the here's the secret to this business, folks. And and I'll give you a little backstory. In 2000, when the downturn happened, it was at 2008, 2009. I uh, you know one of my one of my bigger customers went out of business. They got hit with that um, with the downturn, and it kind of woke me up. It kind of like shocked me. Going, John, you're dealing with pallets here. What are some of the other things that we can deal with that would uh, make up for that loss? So that's when I started looking into all the different other things that come into play, the crates, the dunnage, the wire spools, the 55-gallon metal drums, the IBC totes, the Gaylord boxes, corrugated boxes. This stuff is out there just like the pallets. The beautiful thing is the first thing I got, um, really a, a lot of excess, was, were the wire spools to one of my customers that needed tons of them, as many as I could bring them, right? And I didn't even think about that being a, a another source of revenue. But, you know, the cool part was when I would take in those, those, uh, those wire spools and stacks and stacks and load, truckload after truckload, they put in the wire spools on the pallets in a lot of cases and chalking them up. So now I got two items going out the window out the door at truckload after truckload of my pallets leaving that the business because they're sending out all over uh the uh southeast and this wire spool on top on top of that pallet right so now i got two revenue streams that they're running out of on a weekly basis and i've just doubled and tripled my income from one customer then you do the other one is they needed pallets and they needed 250 corrugated boxes lightly used a week that I could access for free. And what do they put on top of pallets? Boxes with their inventory in it. So now I have a pallet and I have seven, eight, 10 boxes, you know, some smaller stuff that was like 14 inches by 14 inches, you know, on top of those pallets. Now I got really 15 items of mine going out the door on just one pallet and they're filling up a truckload of it, of inventory going out, a semi truckload or a half a truckload. So on any given load, on any given day, on just one of the trucks that coming in that day, I have, you know, a multitude of my items leaving their business never to be seen again. And they need me again, right? They need more of the pallets. They need more of the, of the corrugated boxes. And that's a very comfortable position to be in because you become indispensable for these businesses because now they rely on me for pallets. And maybe even longer, you know, the, the specialty pallets and custom made ones and corrugated boxes for one business. Another one needs dunnage, crates and pallets. The other one needs 55 gallon drums and, and pallets. So five customers can turn into 10, 12, 15 revenue streams reoccurring on a weekly or twice month basis. Right. Oh, do you want to say something? Yeah, I actually do. So something John always says is that, you know, this is not a sexy business. But let me tell you, when he explained the business model, Lily, be quiet. When he explained the business model that the inventory is free, you have such low overhead. And if you think about it just from the business model, I'm telling you, I think it's sexy as hell. Because, uh, yeah, try to figure that out in corporate America which I did for 32 years. Right. Um, and it used to drive me crazy because he was making more money than I was. And I've been in corporate for forever. So I just wanted to mention that, that, um, I yeah, mean, it's a, it's a fantastic business model. It changes lives. So I'll leave you alone. Well, thank you. Um, I think you're sexy. <laughs> the thing, the thing people from the, here's what's cool. People looking from the outside in looking at like the it's one, they don't notice them ever. Right. There's just stacks of pallets. Nobody pays attention to that. Plus, it doesn't look sexy. Some of it, in a, in a way, if you don't know how to do it right, it looks like hard work, right? And I'm fine with them viewing it that way, you know, because it's that under the radar thing that people look for that nobody else notices that really, you know, and in fact, I, before I made this training, I kept it under my hat for years. It's my little secret, it's my little money train, my little freedom that, uh, that I had created for myself my little niche market and it's still the same way there's 2.5 billion pallets out there there's just money uh basically laying around my suppliers and i think wade collins mentioned this one time those suppliers for wade 
He says there are like ATMs all over town that he's just waiting to access, that he can drive up to and access this, this free money that's sitting around by the mountains, you know, mountains of pallets and stacks of pallets that other businesses need. Okay. So the fact that it doesn't look sexy, my truck doesn't look sexy. I, I don't want to be flashy. I want to be under the radar. I want this whole business model for you. If you choose to do it under the radar, just, just, just focus on those four or five customers, even three customers and sell them two, three items each on a recurring basis. You can fly on the radar for the rest of your life. The businesses I deal with, they don't think I'm rich. They don't need to know I'm rich right? as far as the business model goes. I, I, if you've seen one of my videos, I keep one of my corner windows in my, my 1996 F-350. I keep it broken with tape on it. I've, I, I could have fixed it a million times over. But I don't want them to know. I want to keep it a secret. You know? Oh, this is oh, it's just a pallet guy. He's just struggling to make a little bit here, a little bit. Here. Oh, and I'm, I'm really glad that he's got my pallet. But in the, in the reality of the situation, I'm making bank. My students are making bank and they're getting free time back that they never had before. Or they're incorporating their family into the business where they can spend more time with them. And they're not, you know, uh, just seeing them between the hours of seven o'clock and nine o'clock at night, trying to stuff your face full of food and, and having to repeat the whole process the next day. That's the beauty of it. I mean, in the end. And there's like people say that about Internet businesses. All oh, money will shoot out of your computer screen. I had to put this course together and I have to talk to you folks as well. And, and there's internet part of my life now. It's not easy. It is a brain twisting ever, never ending pile of information on how to use the next tool or the next way to run the backside of the business and another tool that integrates with this tool and connected. It's, it's maddening people. And that's what outside of just trying to figure out, who the folks are that would be interested in this. That's a whole other layer of headache. Um, so folks of you looking at internet-based things, take it for me. I have a, a, a unique reference. The palette business is so much more simple than, than doing this. Now, I am grateful that I get to teach people how to do this and watch their lives change and watch them do what I've been getting away with for the last 24 years. But, um, you know, the process that I had to go through to figure that out, the only way I would have had it done is to have a pallet business that gave me the time to figure it out. So free up your time and a whole other lot of possibilities come into play for your life. You know, do what you really do. What, what do you got on the back burner that you've been putting off for the last 10 years? Because you ain't got time to do it because you're working for someone else, or even if you own your own business, it's running you in the ground. And you don't have any time to do it yourself as well. Hey, Joe, worth every penny. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad things are going well for you, Joe. Um, I'm still looking for a rust bucket. Well, do, you know, if, if you've got the money put aside, Brian, um, you know, you used to increase your radius. I drove, I drove what, at two and a half hours to get my truck because I found a really good deal. So I drove the state over and got it. So increase your radius as far. I know some students, they found a deal four states over and they took you, they took a little mini trip and it's a business expense. So write it off and go, you know, if you have to, but increase it to a hundred miles, you know, and there's a lot of places in rural areas that have, uh, this type of stuff laying around. In fact, if you're in our training, you know, some people in our group are upgrading. I know one of my students posted the other day, you know, there were several of them are posting and they're getting a larger truck and um, they're posting their old truck and the one they had uh, up to this point in the Facebook group. So you have that network to work with. Uh, yeah, Texas near Austin. Literally, uh, Brian, you know, I don't know if you're, if you're in here, you're not in the, I don't think you're in the training. Yeah, I don't think you are based on your question. So if you're in our training and we have a private Facebook group as well, 
that for ongoing support, students sharing information. I've done hundreds of live videos inside that Facebook group as well that supports the information and expands on it from the training. Um, it's a great place to do and network with other students to do deals together. It happens hour on every hour upon hour upon hour. We have a lot of students doing business together because one's in the East Coast has supply and a guy on the West Coast it has a, a you know a buyer and they're doing semi truck multiple semi truck loads a day going from the east coast to the west coast uh, as an example inside the grid I've seen it happens all the time I think um I think I covered enough to twist y'all's brains and knots today is there any questions that you folks have Wade maybe you have a question that people ask that you've seen that you want to chime in if you're still in here. How much is the course? Well, there's several options and we can get into that on the call. If you, what you should do is go to the simplestbiz.com. Cause if I try to explain it here, it, I don't want to miss out anything. So when you get on a call and it's not about buying anything on the call, by the way, we have a call where you can ask your questions. We can go over all the different options for, for um, purchasing the course. Cause we got payment plans. We got, ways of buying it outright we ways of, of getting a discount if you act uh, within a seven day period so let's go over that in detail instead of me just trying to skim over it in this in this particular thing and one thing important about that phone call for making that appointment if you go to the simplestbiz.com um, you'll see a way of making an appointment through that and through the emails that you get or if you go to the palletcourse.com there's actually a button a call now button you can go to right then and talk to somebody you do not have to act on the call. I don't operate that way, but I want to make sure the people who buy this training know the information and have their questions answered so they know you're getting into what you're getting into because I want good students. And, you know, uh, I want us to go over fully what those options are for you getting in. And I want to give you a discount because you took the extra step of making the discount. Of, of making the appointment. If I was to quote you the price here on here, I got to give you the normal price of the course. But if you make the appointment, I'm giving you a discount. So um, not trying to be cryptic. That's the way I want to go about it. And uh, for people who actually go for that extra step, it shows us on this end, you know, you're, you're, you've done your little bit of research on this and it appeals to you. It's just a matter of you asking a few questions getting some information and us giving you those details. We'll send you links after the call um, uh, for you to be able to move forward, but we're not going to pressure you to do anything on the phone call itself. Now, if you're ready to go and you've done research and you want to buy it on the call, fine and dandy. We're not, I'm not going to like say, no, no, no. We want people to get in and we want to help you if that's where you are. But we don't, we don't make anybody do anything on the call. Um, we do give you the discount. For making the call and we give you a time window to get that discount and we give you options of what uh all the different options you can take as far as getting in that would fit um, your particular situation hey robert in milwaukee i want to do it well go to the simplestbiz.com if you're ready to go look under any video on my channel and scroll to the scroll down there and I think there's a purchase link in there if you're just ready to go but you know if you want to talk to us go to the um go to the simplestbiz.com or the palletcourse.com and uh set up a conversation we'll send you the links or email us at the simplestbiz at gmail.com if you just need a link to purchase and we'll send you that over you know um and get you going Hey, C. Watts, well, been feeling a bit intimidated getting out there talking to customers. Any suggestions? I bought your car four months, of course, four months ago. This is a very important topic, and I'm glad you asked it. Let's see, Mr. Watts, as entrepreneurs, we have a responsibility to learn the industry that we're in, right? And you've been doing that, see. But we also have our internal demons that we have to overcome. You know, some of you folks have not been in business before. I'm not sure if that's your case, Mr. Watts, if that's your situation. But the way I view it is every day I have to work toward becoming a better communicator, a better person who knows how to ask questions in a way that 
extracts information out of the people I'm trying to deal with, right? To find out what their real issues are. So you have to become a student, even outside my training, if you if you haven't been trained up. If you're going to go in business for yourself, you need to spend 10 minutes a day minimum working on enriching your mind and getting your mindset in the correct mode to be able to help the businesses out in the proper way. When you're equipped with the right questions and know how to handle either rejection or an objection in a correct manner and do it without pressure without salesy techniques or anything like that, if you are trained up in that area, that uncomfortability is going to melt away. So it's your moral obligation to have another layer of training in your life to train yourself up. I will suggest someone to you to, to look into Mr. Watts. And I post him in the group as sometimes as well. Um, Jeremy Miner, look him up on TikTok as an example. And he's probably on YouTube as well. Very skilled individual on showing you how to communicate with people you're trying to communicate in a way, in a way that totally disarms the people you're talking with, right? And totally is effective in trying to in finding out exactly what their issues are. Now, I do have a punch list of questions inside the training for suppliers and buyers, right? For the questions you need to suppliers and have that with you. Use it as a cheat sheet. The fact that you're asking questions shows the business that you know your stuff and you're asking the proper questions. You're uncovering what their problems are. So take that to heart, Mr. Watts, and, and, and add that layer and Get comfortable being uncomfortable for a minute, and you will realize when, within a half a day, like, wow, what was I really scared of? You know, because we're dealing with blue collar, salt of the earth people. And it ends up being fun, especially once you realize you're just having an a, a informative, well structured conversation with these people. And a lot of them are hilarious as far as this goes. So, you know, you could buy all the courses in the world, folks, to be honest with you. If you don't take action on the course, the information, and actually level up as well, if you have deficiencies in speaking with people, you got to do that as well. Uh, because all business is, a, is about um, communication as well. So level up in that area and don't fall for the trick that, oh, maybe I should do an internet business and money will shoot out of my computer screen. Doesn't work. Doesn't work like that. <laughs> all right. Uh, hit me up on Facebook, Sam. Okay. How do I join the group? Well, the Facebook group that I'm referring to is a private group for people who are, have taken the training. I don't even put you in the group until you've gone through the 10th module of the training. There's 14 modules to the course, but it, I need you to have a base knowledge before you even get in there. So you're not you know, asking any silly questions that, that, you know, you'll find out in the first uh, 10 questions, rookie questions, right? So the group is part of, comes along with the training. It is the benefit of the training that you, you get, um, you know, access to it if you purchase the training. And now you have access to another additional mountain of information inside that training. And you have a, an additional mountain of ways of getting your questions answered. And then you have a whole massive network of other individuals across 14 different countries um, that you can work with and network with and do business with as well. Okay. Just like we were saying, somebody was in the truck, but it was also pallet deals and crates and, and all different types of deals that you can do with other companies, especially if you're doing other businesses inside the simplest biz training. Okay. Um, Joe Proctor. Andres, yes, it will, but you will need to drive outside of your town. I'm not sure what y'all were talking about there. Uh, retro, retro bread too. Why not offer apprenticeships? What I see with these great ideas is that I have to pay up front without knowing if it works. Great for hustlers. I can't just drop what I'm doing and be an unemployed. Yeah, so. 
it's a good topic and I'm glad you brought it up. I have a lot of students that I have to, that I'm responsible for, right? For me to do a one-on-one -on -one apprenticeship, I, I, I don't have the time in the day to, to do one-on-one. -on -one. So what I created in the training is out in the field, teaching you one-on-one -on -one, out in the trenches, not just theory, you're out there with me going through all the different information that I'm delivering so you can see what I see, do what I do and say what I say. It's a way for me to deliver this information where I'm not leaving anything out. And at this point in my business for the pallet business, think about it. I have all my business set up. I have my suppliers. I have my value. I have the deals structured correctly. I have the tight radius of businesses that I'm dealing with, right? I've been doing it for 24 years. If you came to visit me, I'm driving into a business. They're loading my truck. I'm strapping it down. I've just talked to the forklift driver and had a chat with him about his wife's yelling at him last night, right? I'm not even talking to the the warehouse manager or the owner, I, I don't need to. I'm just driving in the loading my truck. I go to the other one and having another conversation while the forklift driver unloads my truck there, writing an invoice or you know, do an email. Uh, I do it through QuickBooks and mailing in. So that part's the easy part. The training, I have to go into detail where I show you step by step by step by step by how to do this. And also, teach you how to can, how you can transition from doing a full-time job to doing this um, because you'll realize I, I'll give you I'm a, I mean this is going long but I'm gonna go through a little understanding of what I went through when I first did this I stumbled into this and I was doing it wrong back in 1998 but still I did get some customers and I painted myself in the corners but I also had a friend of mine open up a catering business and I was trying to hedge my bets I'd I'd left the the once I discovered the pallet business, I never did remodeling again because I, I said, where can I find a business where I get my product for free? But I did have a scenario where I'm, all right, I'm starting this business here, but a friend of mine needed some help with our catering business. And I would get a little like 4.35 in the morning, help run that operation. And, and at noon, I would have free time because I've been there from four to noon. Still have a few more prep stuff to go in the afternoon for the next day and getting all that organized. But I would take an hour and a half break and do two loads of pallets in a lot of cases. And I was near in that that catering business was near some of the businesses that I had built out. So I would knock out two orders. And I would bring in 12, 1400 bucks on a Monday lunch. On a Monday lunch hour. Well, hour and a half and knock those two orders out and come back. Those checks started coming in when I first started doing this. And I would look at my catering business check, getting up for 30, killing myself and what they paid me. And then I look at the check, that first check that came in from the pallet business where I wasn't being paid by the hour, but by the unit. And the hour on that Monday lunch hour than I did all week with the pallet, I mean, with the catering business. I had to tell her I can't help you anymore. You know, it didn't last that long. I had to push it aside because the possible and the time freedom I was getting from that few orders on that Monday and that Tuesday and that Thursday that I was leaving and doing that way outweighed what I was making working for somebody else. And I would find if I was in your position, that one and a half, two hour window, sometime in your week, I would, if I was in your position, I would take a half a day off if you have some vacation time once a week to make that happen for you to be able to um, uh, transition from the pallet business to your, to, I mean, from your job to the pallet business. Sorry, my wife's talking, distracting me. Um, yeah, talk to Wade, man. Wade's been doing this business forever. Um, we'll learn this. And and Wade would be a great person to talk with uh, as one of my students to, to, to give you some uh, answers about what you need to do. So um, no problem, Joe. I'll call it. So I don't know how y'all can. Yes, I'm the car carrying Kool-Aid drinker. <laughs> 
uh, it's a way to get the, put a way for them to get a hold of you. I can't talk to everybody. I have a lot of people inquiring about this. So, I, and I do have some students there that, that help um, talk to folks as well. Uh, Wade, I appreciate you volunteering to do that. So if you have some questions, go to simplestbiz.com. Um, I'll, uh, and if you land on the, or the pallet course.com, you can call directly or you can, uh, cause there's a call now button on that page. And once you get onto the simplestbiz.com, there's a way of booking appointment right there. If I've given you enough information or even follow me for a little bit and you're ready to actually go through the process of, um, getting the training. I know you don't know me. I don't know you. I just know this business backwards and forwards for the last 24 years. And I want you folks not to dismiss it right offhand because it doesn't look sexy enough. And there's no Lamborghinis and, and, and uh, palm trees blowing in the background here. But it's a life that's fun. And the more you understand it and the what it offers you and without the headaches, the way I go about doing it, fun life. You know, think of it as scavenger hunt with a map. So there you go. I'm glad y'all spent some time with me. I know I went, I can't believe I'm at 51 minutes. Um, but once I get talking about this stuff, I get excited about it because of how it's affected my life and how it's affected the people that I've taught and watching their lives transform. And I want to help out as many people as possible do this business in a streamlined way to where you can get your, your life back and not be chained to a job all right thank y'all john wilker out and if i can figure out how to end the stream i'll do it smoothly hopefully this time oh there it is bye